Hi, Noreen Weiss. How are you? I'm fine, Jen Tuttle. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you for joining me for 10 Minute Talk. Thank you for having me. Today, we're going to talk about understudies. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and I figure it's really timely right now uh, during the time of COVID. We've had uh, just recently on Broadway and all around the country, just so many understudies who've um, uh, saved shows, really. Yeah. Um, uh, and so we all kind of know those narratives of like, you know, somebody who came in and saved a show, which, uh, is like, like makes for a lovely news story, but yeah, yeah. there's real value to being an understudy that goes way beyond that. Totally. So I wanted to talk about that today because oh, yeah. you've had a couple of really, um, I think kind of extraordinary uh, understudy experiences. And so, um, uh, tell me about your first one. The first one was pre pandemic. Um, it was, I was straight out of grad school and, um, it was this show that was taking place in LA at the Geffen Playhouse, um, which is a pretty renowned theater. Yeah. And it was really, I, I had auditioned for the lead part and found out that I think the auditions were just kind of formalities that already cast them. Um, but I think casting said, yeah, we're going on to understudies now. And, and at the time, equity, actors equity, you couldn't just join it. You needed to earn points along the way. And so I uh, thought, well, I'm straight out of grad school. I really want that equity card. I want to throw myself in the running for this. And, and it's a playwright whom I really loved, uh, Rajiv Joseph. Mm -hmm. And um, it was an excuse to go hang out in L.A. for a little bit. I had to be a local hire, um, but thankfully I had a family out there that whose couch I could kind of crash on for a few months <laughs> and it was so worth it. <laughs> That's always um, a good skill to have as well. The ability to couch surf <laughs> as you need to do your work. Um, uh, fun fact, I also earned my equity card through points. So um, I love that that you negotiated that. I mean hats off to the open policy. I think it's a great policy. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, that was earning those points. Like it was a whole career, just chapter. <laughs> yeah. And just, I yes, it was like this huge transition, right. From, mm -hmm. yeah. Like your, your training, yeah. to the professional world and trying to yeah. get those first few points. Yeah. But then those first few points came and then more come and more come because, yeah. you know, like work begins. And work. it can take years and years to get, I mean, it could take years and years. Could, yeah. To get there. It just took so long for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what was the name of the, of that show? It was called Guards at the Taj. Oh. Um, it was also off Broadway at the Atlantic. So it started off there. And then there was the, the West Coast premiere was here at the, was there at the Geffen Playhouse. Now, uh, did you go on? I did not go on, no, but I was prepared. I was off book and ready on day one. And it's always better to be off book and ready because then you never go on. And if you're not ready, then somehow you end up going on. <laughs> right? Like, what? You're like mm -hmm. at home, like, what? Get that call. <laughs> and um, uh, in addition to the equity points, which was uh, at the time a really great added benefit of understudying, um, getting that kind of rolling. Yeah. What else were the benefits uh, like of understudying? Yeah, I think there were two big ones. One was the resume building, because when you see a big theater up there, um, people see that on the resume and they go, OK, can trust this person. Um, they've worked regionally. They've worked at a, at a high level. Um, but the other one is just learning how to how to justify the lead actor's choices, the lead actor's line readings, the lead actor's movements. Because when you're in a rehearsal room in theater, it's kind of this back and forth of why would I go here? Why would I go there? But if you're just copying what the other person has done and still trying to find a way to make it authentic, it's a lot harder. Um, it's a lot harder to self-direct and to justify and to create those choices internally and not have any leeway to shift away from it and it's a skill that is really necessary i think yeah i mean uh especially if you're going to be a multifaceted uh actor which most people are in order to survive and you know make money and extend their career like film and tv you're always having to do that totally right? yeah because on tv it's uh 
hit your mark, say your line. And in theater, someone goes, well, why, what's my just, why would I move there? And in TV, it's you move there because I told you to, and it took us 45 minutes to set up the light. And this is the best angle for the shot. Exactly. You justify it. The setup is there. You mm -hmm. figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All exactly. that internal work, that's on you. That's why we hired you. Yeah. So that's a great skill set to have. And like you said, like the idea that, um, you know, uh, if you're working at a place like the Geffen, I mean, that's a stamp of approval. That means somebody like put their, put all their marbles in your basket and believed that you could carry that show if need to be. Absolutely. And that's, a, that's a big stamp of approval. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's something that it, it, it doesn't go away. Once you've had that up there, then it's just, it, it opens a lot of doors later on in a lot of different places that you don't always recognize at the time. Because work begets work, right? Exactly. Work begets work. And tell me, uh, did your, what was your second understudy experience? The second understudying experience was um, just coming out of lockdown. So still pandemic, obviously, but uh, lockdown. Um, so it was the first show after 18 months. Um, and we started, I think, at the end of August, beginning of September of 2021. Um, and so again, I had an audition for the lead part and the casting kind of said, Hey, we think we found our person already. Um, but now we're looking for understudies and this particular play, I just identified with what that character in the world of that art was going through. And I thought it was just such a beautiful way to explore it for myself to almost go through that journey while, um, being able to look at it from a, uh, an objective point of view, further remove myself from it. So I really wanted to do it. And, um, and casting found out that I had auditioned not only the same playwright, but the same actor from the previous production. And they'd already liked my tape. So it just made their job a hell of a lot easier because if casting can just go, we don't have to worry about that um, because he checks all the boxes. We just have to get the theater sign off on it. But also we have these three things, the fact that he's good, in the audition, the fact that he's already um, understudied at a high level, and the fact that he's already understudied this actor, good to go. Um, so it just, it, it ended up, that previous understudying experience ended up really helping out just to get this role um, this time around. And it was also a, a Rajiv Joseph play, right? It was a Rajiv Joseph play as well, <laughs> exactly, yeah. So it just checked off all those boxes. And Rajiv Joseph, for me, he's my Shakespeare. So anytime he's doing something, I'm always trying to see how can I be near that to at least see it. But if I can be in the room at the same time, amazing. And through the course of the rehearsal process, because we were hired earlier this time around, he and I found out that both of our families are from the same area in Ohio. So we were actually able to forge a real intimate connection and just understand the beauty of the smallness of the world. And it was just, it was an intangible joy that I could not have foreseen happening along the way. And, and coming out of lockdown, it's you also uh, like reinvigorating your, your career, uh, again, strengthening that network and those relationships, yeah. Um, yeah. yourself in yeah. front of a large variety of people who could lead to, to other work. Totally. Yeah. So the guy whom I was understudying, he, um, great guy. Um, so I think when there are understudies, there, there are broadly two types. One where they feel threatened by the person in the wings and one when they're like, All about Eve. <laughs> yeah, but, but the other one where they're just so self-assured and secure in their work that it's just, you're a good dude. I'm not threatened by you. In fact, I want to help you. Thankfully, I had the latter where the guy was just really supportive of me. And he recommended me to the play I'm doing at the moment to that director where she reached out and said, hey, this Narain guy, he any good? And he just kind of said, yeah, yeah, you're going to want to work with him, which again, that's that uh, seal of approval, that stamp of authenticity, that check mark worked out really well. And it just helped me stay sharp with the work, especially coming out of lockdown, 18 yeah. months of not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So being able to just kind of gradually get my feet wet before jumping into other full-fledged theater productions where I was not the understudy. It just, it made the transition very, very easy for me coming out of lockdown. That's, that's amazing. So I, I love this because we, we always see how like, oh, understudies save the show, but there's this other side where understudies uh, can open up, uh, like taking on that, that role can open up whole new possibilities for the actor. I, I think I, totally said to one of my classes the other day that like so many, you know, we're seeing like 
um, I know um, so many of the famous people playing lead roles on Broadway right now are, you know, being uh, covered by their understudies, yeah. but so many of those people were understudies themselves. Absolutely, yeah, but it's a full circle thing. I was yeah. just gonna say, full circle. And, yeah, and you can tell who, it's, it's a lot like if you're on a TV or a film set where, you know, the extra has finally made their way to the series regular. Yeah. Where they, they just treat the people on set with a little bit more grace, with a little bit more love and humility because they remember what it was like to be that dude so far removed or be that person so far removed from the, the, the main tent and then gradually work their way forward till they're the first one in front of the camera. And it's, uh, it's just this long journey, but it's this really beautiful journey. Um, and you can tell when someone has put in that time because they just walk around with a little bit more grace towards everyone around them. Which is just good for life too, you know. I was gonna say, which makes both the industry better and the working conditions on set or in the, that rehearsal space or theater better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just when people have like walked through the whole process. Yeah. yeah, they've earned it also, and I think sometimes when people find um, intense success very early, it, there's a, a tendency to take it for granted, and therefore also the burnout is a lot faster. I think yeah. as well. Because, because it didn't take you as long to get to the top of the mountain and look down. You were placed at the top of the mountain and there's kind of this thing of, well, now what? Yeah. Um, because the satisfaction doesn't exist. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm so glad that you joined me today. And I Thank loved... You. I, I loved how the connective tissue started with, I, I, I didn't say no to this opportunity um, because I could see all these great, you know, working in the room with this playwright and, yeah. you know, uh, having a possible opportunity to go on and putting yeah. this, you know, place on my resume, getting my equity points, which mm -hmm. led to other work, which led to other work. And then yeah. so many steps down the road, like a callback, right? Yeah. Oh, we remember you. We yeah. like you. It mirrors off you. of that. Exactly. And I think a lot of people shame the our industry because of how much it's about networking. And I don't like that word networking, but it's just about making human connections. Relationships. You're right. Yeah. yeah I know yeah. I totally used it, but I think you're right because- Oh, no. Did you? I didn't even register that you used I it. I did, but I feel <laughs> sort of the same way you do, that that sort yeah. of feels um, mercenary as opposed right. to, yeah, just- being in rooms just with people and connecting real relationships. Yeah. And I mean, the only reason why I don't like it is because I'm intensely introverted. So I feel like I have to step outside myself yeah. to go and connect with someone. And it, it can be that some people are very good at that. I'm just not for me. It's just, I'll connect with you on whatever limited level I'm able to. Yeah. And if I'm able to connect with you over art, even better, because that's a language we can both just go back and forth with for hours. And I think that's a really good point too, because I think some people are um, are intimidated by that idea of like feeling like I have to be out there, like literally selling myself like I'm a product. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, to, a certain I degree, can't do that. to a certain degree, we're doing that, but it, if it's through the work and through yeah. the connection and collaboration with people, yeah. that feels a lot less burdensome than like, yeah, like there's hey. less pressure on it. Exactly. Yeah. There's less of a thing of, feeling like you have to schmooze as opposed to just meeting someone where you're at, letting them meet you where they're at. And uh, and it, I'm, I'm 30 years old. It took me 30 years to register that it's not that. I've only just now begun to understand that it's just about having a quick little connection with someone. It doesn't have to be anything. It can just be a moment of honesty and connection and then moving onwards because the more honest and connected you are with someone, it's it, it will land, it will resonate. I think Later people on. really appreciate authenticity over like a hard sell. <laughs> totally, yeah. yeah. Like, okay, okay. As opposed to like, oh, you've intrigued me. I want to know more. Yeah, and we also see that so much on social media, right? Everyone's just presenting the best version of themselves that when you are actually just honest with someone for a minute, then they, they it's it's new to them. It's kind of like, wait, it's what? It's like disarming. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing, yeah. 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 Well, um, this is our first in our series of 10 minute talks. And I have to say, I'm so thrilled that you joined me today. And this was such a great talk. 
was. Thank you so much for having me. I genuinely am so honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So um, this is uh, the City College Department of Theater and Speech. Rain Weiss is uh, one of our faculty members and I'm the chair, Jennifer Tuttle. And today we were talking about understudies. Understudies. <laughs> 